Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Shadow Lord's Castle. This is, uh, actually rather pleasant. Nice little rooftop garden, statues, some tasteful irrigation. And, um, office buildings. We're on top of an office building. Hey, before we head on, there is the little matter of this, uh, weapon hiding in the corner. It is the last of our Phoenix series of weapons. The sword. It's not bad, but we have better swords. Yeah, of course we have the spear. Anyhow, moving on to... Um... Uh, okay. Moving on to... The same room. familiar. Actually, wait. I think we're looping around the same paths. What do you mean? I think we're stuck. There must be an escape route somewhere. I have to admit, this is a far better security system than the uh, box puzzles back there. But as though that little cinematic showing the area wasn't obvious enough, um... There are birds here. To whom does the true voice speak? To whom does the true form show itself? You must access. It... it can talk! I access. Why did he disappear from the world? The hell should I know? Patience. I believe this is some manner of password. A password? Yes. The correct answer should grant us access to the castle. I feel confident I have heard this somewhere before. To whom does the true voice speak? To whom does the true form show itself? I ask, why did he disappear from the world? You must ask. I answer because of a black disease. I ask, how can humans extend their lives? I answer by separating body from soul. I ask, what is the destination of soul? I answer, they are placed in their corresponding shells. Very well. You are acknowledged as masters. You may enter. Well then, it seems the way is open. The only penalty incurred by getting it that wrong is just, um, being teleported back to the beginning of the room. Anyway, we can finally move on. It's... it's the twins from your village. Opal. Devil, what are you doing here? Hey, any chance you'll just go back to the village? This is a very dangerous place. Even if you can find Yona here, you probably can't get her out. How did you get here? Shh. We're asking questions right now. Shh. We 
we're asking questions right now. No dice, huh? Well, I guess we don't have a choice. No, I suppose not. How sad. We didn't want to fight you. It's true. We didn't want to. Devola? What's happening? Sorry. This is our fate. I spoke the truth. We did not want to fight you. We wanted to put it off for a hundred years or so. Until the next generation came along. What are you talking about? Now these shades... I don't think so. It's a lie. I don't believe it. You never thought you'd grow to be this powerful. This is madness. Why do you block our path? You have no cause to speak so with us, Grimoire Vice. You are a traitor. the sealed verses. Of course we can. The power came from us in the first place. We simply loaned you a small portion of <sighs> Vice! Are you alright? Devil, Popola, why are you doing this? Why are you siding with the shades? Oh, um... That was... A bit out of left field. Not quite sure what the assumptions these the actual twins came from, though. We saw back in the area that the shades can assume human forms. Could be they're trying to psych him out. I mean, to be honest, I wouldn't want to fight near either. If I could find a way to make him go back home without battle, I'd do it. <laughs> Why? The answer to every riddle lies within the heart of the Shadow Lord. The Shadow Lord? You've been on his side this whole time? You must search for that answer yourself. You've got to face your own truth now. Please, enter the Shadow Lord's castle. Devola and Popola are fighting us. Yes, they do seem to be putting us through a great deal of You all right there? How odd. For long years, my mind and tongue have been my greatest asset. But now the latter seems to be far here. Vice? Don't look at me like that. I am Grimoire Vice. I am perfectly f ha, 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 ha. Of course, I could be wrong. They all seem to give Vice a magic stroke. Oh dear. I think I hear a waltz. A waltz? Don't you mean a Grim Fandango? <laughs> uh, cause, um, Grim Fandango was designed with the aesthetic of Dios, Dios Mertos, so most of the main characters were... Never mind. It certainly is a grand affair. 
bunch of dancing bastards. They're all shades. Ah, royal ball, how utterly divine. I think we're locked in. It's not like I was planning to leave. Yeah, it's a bit late for that. I mean, I'm gonna kill things, but I'm still confused. So I guess this being the Shadow Lord's cast, this is where all the uh, shades hang out and uh, kill time by dancing. Yeah. I suppose there are worse things to do, but. Anyhow, this is the ballroom. And this is where quite a number of larger shades have gathered. This is also where you can begin getting 30% words, so if you'll excuse me very quickly, I'm just gonna equip those and move along. The shades you fight here are no different from the ones outside. In fact, I would hazard to guess they're actually, um, not as tough. At least they certainly didn't seem to be. For instance, you might notice that these guys do not automatically, um, generate anti-magic armor as soon as you knock them down, which is uh, fortunate. That was not a gimmick that I much enjoyed, to be honest. They still do. Some of them still do. But it's not um, its not a guarantee like it was with the other guys. Little note here for speedrunners um, who are inexplicably watching this. Uh, the dancing shades will generally break off after you've destroyed the previous wave or after a certain amount of time has passed. That means that if you come here quick enough with a big enough weapon and a low enough difficulty, then you can destroy the shades and have to wait around for several seconds before the next wave then begins uh, to appear. Bit of a nuisance, um, not that big a deal, of course. Damn it, they won't stop coming. I'll open the next door. Cover me. Hey, I do love a good dance. Knock it off, Vice. Hmm? Oh, right. Protect the hussy, yes. Good plan, let's go. They also, yeah, they also begin spawning, um, basically infinitely at this point. Door, come on! Oh, come on! Kane, hurry! It's not open yet. Do I look like a goddamn locksmith to you? Watch her. Oh, you idiots! What are you doing? Lock doesn't want to open. Fine, I'll just break it down. Damn no good bullshit bastard! Come on! Ugh. Got it. Kaine, look out! As soon as Emil says that, you are now free to talk to Kaine again. You okay? Yeah, but we got problems. <laughs> now, I do want to interject briefly here. Uh, we've seen before that shades can come together and form, like, massive conglomerate creatures, and this was no exception. It has, in fact, taken the most powerful form known to man. Yeah, it's a bore. We don't need forgiveness, asshole. 
Kind of. Right then. This is Goose, named after Mother Goose. It is a boar. Not quite sure what's up with that. This whole crazy thing does remind me pretty heavily of the fight, particularly against um, Gandorf at the end of Twilight Princess, which, knowing this game, is 100% intentional. How should I know? Kaine, are you alright? Fine. Let's just kill some shit and move on, alright? So you can probably take a pretty good guess as to what the strategy for fighting Goose is. It seems to lose some control when it charges. Damn it! How can something so big be so fast? And that's kind of related to it. Um, by and large, she will try and charge across the battlefield or just stomp you. Her main attack, though, is the charging one. And, well, if you just try and invade it, she generally loses some amount of uh, motor control and may crash into a wall, at which point you're allowed to just wail on her. Got it. Now fighting a boar wearing bacon armor. It's a weird day. Fortunately, Goose's armor is mostly for show. Uh, because it's so oddly arranged along her back, any normal attack that you use will actually wind up going straight under it onto her fleshy underside. So it presents a minor nuisance if you hit her at the wrong angle, but by and large, you can ignore it. You can also wind up knocking the uh, whole slats of it off, which will give you more openings to be able to hit her. She also still hurts. But the second phase here is basically the same as the first. You just have to not let that happen. And? And? Can we even hurt this thing? Uh... That fog! Oh no! I can't stop now. Damn it! Stay focused, Kaine. No! Don't fall victim to such distractions! Come on! We have to keep going! Move it! Right, so once Goose begins, um turn the room green, that means she's pumping it full of toxic gas. Um, nice little detail here, as far this as way, the move. dialogue is concerned. And Kainy and Nier both kind of choke on it, but Emil and Vice, both um, having happening to lack lungs, are completely unaffected. I don't know. Makes me happy. Before we move on, we have to take a moment to grab this thing which is the very last weapon that we needed. Uh, the Dragoon Lance is also from Dragon Guard, and as you can see, it directly references that, uh, symbolizes the pact between a warlord and an ancient dragon. And we're done. That's all of them. Up here! So, um, what follows here is, uh, the single part of the game where I actually incurred the most game overs. It's um, a little embarrassing and a bit ridiculous. I'm very bad at stairs. And boxes. How can we deal with this bad, bad thing? I'm also really bad with wild pigs chasing me upstairs that are filled with boxes. Um, fortunately, it seems to have just been me being completely incompetent when I was originally playing the game. Uh, this section isn't hard, it's just a little bit tricky if you don't know what you're doing, if you don't know to anticipate the boxes and jump over them, if you don't know to dodge roll a couple of times. But it's not too hard to um, gain enough uh, distance on the board so that you can wind up getting yourself locked in this room. Fabulous! Damn it, I can't get it open! But Kaine, I saw your lock-picking seals back in the other room. They were fantastic! Attack incoming! Strike the beast while it's down. 
Anyway, subsequent battles with Goose obviously contain the uh, exact same strategy that they did before. The entrance is locked too! It seems that we're in a bit of a predicament. Yeah, because if you hadn't noticed, um, her health bar goes down, and then she gets right back up. Uh, Hit the thing while it's down! There are no lives. Goose is immortal. She will keep coming back. All you can do at this juncture is just try and knock her down so that she stops attacking you for, for a few seconds. But other than that, um... No! This will be mad. ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっ
we, um, we should make that worth something. We've got people to save. Devola! Popola! Oh, look. You made it. We've been waiting for so long. What the hell is going on? It began 1300 years ago. Humanity, finding itself on the brink of extinction, undertook a last-ditch rescue plan called Project Gestalt. Gestalt? Do you still not remember, Grimoire Vice? Then let's give you a refresher. human. In fact... Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, sometimes the truth can be a real bitch. You want to finish that thought for him, sister? All of us, every person standing in this room, are mere shells created by the true humans. You lie! Nope, not this time. You're not human. None of us are. So then humans... I mean, the true humans, they're extinct? No, they still live on. You know them as shades. Each shade is a twisted remnant of what was once a human being. Crazy, huh? Now let's skip the part where you stand there with your mouths agape and just get down to business. Wait! Wait! Sorry, but we're gonna be needing that shell of yours. The rightful owner has been waiting for a very long time. Please don't be angry with us. We are only doing our duty. Under the command of the true humans, we live eternally for the sole purpose of controlling others. That's the only reason we exist. You have your own motives, your own desires. And we have ours. I fear it really is just that simple. Don't speak such foolish mess. <sighs> Sorry. We're the same. You are us? Tools in the hands of a master. I'm nothing like you. None of us are. Well, here we go. Uh, penultimate battle versus Devil on Popola. Um, a little note before we continue much farther. This is the only fight where uh, the music actually stops when you go into the item menu kind of interrupts the flow and you have to do a lot of healing, but whatever. So, um, our first match is against Devola, just Devola, with um, some amount of assistance from Popola. She has, again, uh, some of the sealed verses at her disposal. Mostly she winds up using that triple punch dark hand attack. She is also very very good about teleporting all over the room. If you watch the map in the corner, you can actually see where she's going next and anticipate her next movement, instead of running around like a chick with his head cut off. There we go. It's easy enough to keep her stun locked so she doesn't try and use um, Dark Hand on you too much, which is, for the best, it does hurt a lot. As I mentioned, Popla is providing some amount of assistance. She's using the little dark blast bullets to try and create a field around Devola to keep her from being directly attacked. Fortunately, they're relatively weak 
Even if you get hit by them, it's not that big a deal, and you can slash through them without too much problem. The girls do seem to be a bit out of practice for fights, so this is over pretty quick. become. There's something else there now. Something like pride. You know? I mean, without all this, I couldn't have become your friend. 
goodbye, my friends. Thank you for everything. Emil. For so long, all I could do was destroy. But now, I have a chance to save something. No! Keep going. Move. Emil. Just have to learn.